Welcome to Shuttles and Needles, a contemporary uh, experiential weaving studio. Our focus here is all about hands-on creativity. Shuttles and Needles welcomes people from every background and profession, providing experience, space and support for one to enjoy the meditative and joyful aspects of textile crafts like hand weaving, hand spinning and felting. Thread Talk here, brought to you by Shuttles and Needles, is an initiative to interview and interact with experts from different fields related to hands-on work and textile art and crafts. Fabric Narratives Colla Collaborative Animation is our third episode now, showcasing animation filmmaker, educator, Nina Sabnani herself. She is known for her films that blend together animation and ethnography. Nina has taught at the National Institute of Design for two <coughs> decades, later with the Industrial Design Center, IIT Bombay. She has received many awards for her work in the fields of animation, documentary films, and painting. We are honored here to have Nina to present her film, and I'm especially elated to see what's in store for the episode. Well, thank you very much, uh, Shuttles and Needles, for this opportunity to share my work with you. Um, uh, I'm very happy to and connect with Kalyani after, uh, I don't know, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And Pramod said, what's 40 years? <laughs> it's, it's not that, not even, a, not even a century, you know, not even a, what is it called? 50 years is called what? Whatever. Uh, is it? No. <laughs> I'm bad at that. Anyway, so uh, what I thought I will do uh, today is uh, show you two films. Uh, and it makes sense to show them here because they all deal with cloth and fabric. And uh, cloth is also something very dear to me. Uh, in NID, all my friends <laughs> were from textile design. If they were not from animation, they were all from textile because they were the only ones working late into the night. They they working you know thread by thread and we working frame by frame so we kind of understood each other well you know uh, and we empathized with each other because everybody else especially the graphic design people would just make one logo and then they would be done you know <laughs> and here we'd be struggling and struggling so 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 because of them. Um, uh, because of uh, all my friends in textiles actually got a good sense of you know what it takes to make cloth and and also the tactility the emotion there's a lot of that with cloth so the two films that I'm showing are made in cloth uh, the artworks are all around you you can see them later and if you're interested maybe we can talk about how these came to move in the films um, both films have something in common besides cloth. They are about migration, about loss and separation. Uh, when I was learning animation, at that point, everybody thought animation is funny and it's you know humorous. Uh, I wanted to make a tragedy. <laughs> what would it be to do a tragedy in animation? Is it ever possible? And, 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 uh, and I had the opportunity. I'm not saying this is a tragedy, but it's not, it's not the slapstick humor kind of thing that uh, one was exposed to as children in, uh, you know, with Disney films or Warner Brothers. So it's a little, uh, please don't expect it to make you laugh. So I'm just making some disclaimers today <laughs> before we see the film. And uh, there are many more things that we can uh, discuss once we see the films, okay. So the first one is called Mukund and Riyaz, which is a story about, uh, it's a personal narrative uh, about my father and his experience of the partition. Uh, the second film is about also uh, migration uh, and, but not partition, but it is people who came uh, from Pakistan into Kutch in the war India-Pakistan War of 71-72. So um, both have experienced that kind of displacement, and uh, my and you know uh, also because they also went through an earthquake. So so there are some common factors between the two, of course. Uh, and I and I had a chance to have deep conversations <coughs> with both of them. Uh, so the films are a result of uh, conversations and them recalling their memories. Okay, we can watch. <laughs> Mukund 
Anand and Riaz were the best of friends, although they would occasionally play together. Riaz loved Mukund's cap and tried hard to get at it. This cricket cap was Mukund's prized possession. With the cap on, he felt he could do anything. <laughs> well, just about. Riaz took Mukund to a traditional bone setter who lived in the Kiamari area close to the harbour. रात नींदर न करो विचार करो की बनाओ के We'll have an obvious question, why cloth? So I'll start with that. Why cloth as a medium for your animation? Okay, so uh, for the Kach film, it was their art, you know, they made it in cloth. Uh, and for my father's story, first of all, uh, my father worked in the textile mills industry for 25 years. So I used it as a meta text, you know, to speak, to speak more about him. He also came from Sindh, where they used to do embroidery, so I thought, it went very, you know, we didn't have any photographs. I mean, they had just run, ran away, right? So they didn't have any pictures or anything to, to even create. And my father had said very clearly, you don't make a cartoon out of me. <laughs> when I asked his permission to, you know, make this into a film. So, so that's why I wanted to use cloth. I also felt both the films, you know, are about memory in terms of, uh, you know, someone's memory of what happened. And, and, and cloth seems to lend itself very well uh, because it, it shares, you know, common traits like uh, cloth also fades like memory. Cloth also fragments and shreds, but it's also very persistent and it's That's strong. Deep. Yes, and it, it has the, the feeling of emotion in it. And, it, you know, cloth is what makes a space uh, warm and cozy. You know, otherwise it's just a blank building that you go, walk into. The moment you put cloth around it, it creates that kind of a warmth. So cloth has that heartwarming kind of feeling. So I felt, uh, I didn't think about it so much then, but the more I think about it, <laughs> you know, that is what it speaks to me, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, to normally go about it, I wanted to check what inspires you to start something like this, or whenever you start a film or whatever. How do you find your inspiration? I think stories find me sort of, you know, because uh, it just so happened. I mean, my the goal was to engage with my father. It became a film, <laughs> you know, coincidentally, it became a film. It was, uh, you know, something uh, my father had not 
spoken about in years and, and it's a story of many people who came through during the partition. They did not have the emotion, you know, the, they couldn't deal with it or they had just sort of blocked it out or, and also, you know, you're pushed into a scenario where uh, you have to get on with life, right? I mean, suddenly you are, you are, you are homeless, so you're not worrying about, uh, you know, remember, and you don't want to remember these things anymore. So, um, for him uh, to talk about it and uh, for me to engage with him was very important because he was not well and you know when somebody is not well, uh, what kind of a conversation can you have with them? You know, how are you doing? Uh, and you already know they are not doing well, so what are you going to say? So, so when we spoke about his childhood, it brought up, you know, I mean he started remembering things which made him forget, you know, that he, he was, you know, uh, going through a difficult time in his life. And also, I got to know him as a person rather than a father who, who, who's always asking you, have you eaten, <laughs> you have enough money, you know, are you doing well in life and things like that. So it became a way to engage, you know. So, and with the women in Karch also, it was, uh, uh, how to recall things that, you know, very difficult things when people recall. And they had already made these, uh, you know, uh, tapestries, you know, with all this embroidery. But what was interesting is like when they were talking about it, they would recall not only the moment when they made it and, you know, what cloth they chose and things like that, but they also started remembering other memories <laughs> which this image kind of triggered you know, which, which they had not even represented. So I, I, I think what excites me is working uh, with people uh, uh, and their memories, <laughs> and, you know, and then trying to find a way to present them, you know, to retell them in, in material. Because, uh, you know, like material speaks as much as, uh, as the words and, you know, uh, the actions or whatever. So I, I guess what uh, inspires me is other people's stories. Very nicely put. <laughs> Thank you. So you definitely would have heard a lot of stories. Uh, uh, how would you pick and choose what to make a film at the moment? Or <laughs> right now, I'm making a film about my mother's experience of partition. I ra ran into a friend some years ago, and she said, "What are you doing now?" I said, "I'm work working on a, you know, I'm I'm working with my mother." My it takes a long time, you know, it's not like you do it overnight. So I've been talking to my mother now the past three, four years. She's very reluctant to talk about herself. She's worse than my father, you know. My father could speak, you know, but my mother, uh, she takes a long time. So, so when I told this to my friend, she said, don't you have any topics to make films about? Why are you going on making films about your father and your mother, you know? <laughs> but I think uh, it, in a way it is finding one's own roots you know because um, we are the children of refugees we don't have a sense of place uh, everybody you know talks about having a native place i remember <laughs> in school everybody asked me what's your native place so i would go to my father what's my native place and he would say uh, ahmedabad so they would say no that is a big city <laughs> you have to be from a village so, so, I was, so you know, where, where, where you were born. So I said, I was born in Ahmedabad. No, but you're not a Gujarati. Okay, then maybe Jaipur, because that's where I went to school. But you're not a Rajasthani. So now you have to be, you know, to belong, you have to, you know, be, that's how our country is set up, you know. And that's how most places are set up. So it was uh, tough, you know, growing up to not have a sense of place. And in a way, now it feels very nice. We don't fight <laughs> over land and region, you know, we just live, we go from place to place, we don't worry about, you know, where, where it is. And you can be, you can be anywhere. My father told me, why are you so worried, you know, Gandhiji called us world citizens. So don't worry about, you know, where you, whether you have, a, you know, uh, what is it called, native place or a <laughs> region <laughs> where you belong, you know. So, uh, so I guess I am in interested, this is not something that, uh, I logically and knowingly, you know, got into, but I think uh, it does drive you, you know, some things drive you to belong, to, to, to find uh, those roots and, and so your roots become, the memory becomes your roots, you know. 
that becomes a place uh, uh, or a space which you can call your own because that cannot be taken away you know so so i guess what drives me is uh, that kind of you know, and also uh, people who are marginalized or you know whose stories you'll never hear you never hear of one person's experience of the partition you hear the whole partition you hear very the grand narratives you hear you don't the hear train in, which went away <laughs> huh. I mean, you know, you always hear like so many people were killed. It's all statistics, you know. It's not like an individual's voice that we get to hear always. Even these people, imagine uh, they were refugees for eight years. So this boy, he came uh, when he was eight. By the time he, he knew he got a citizenship, he was 16. And how difficult it is at that age. To, to you know not have a sense of belonging or a sense of even identity and things like that. So, so I guess that's what drives me. An interesting take to one's belonging, definitely. I think what really drives her is to release pocketed pain which people hold inside. That's very they nicely do. put. Thank they you. do, and they have buried it. <laughs> but like, uh, it's very interesting. My mother never spoke about herself, but now that we are working on the film, Whoever she meets, she starts telling them about her child very readily, you know. Yeah. She's claiming her past, you know, in, in a sense, which she had gotten rid of. <laughs> well, then we're definitely glad you're picking stories from your family. So another, uh, if you could share experiences from working with the local artisans there who made these embroideries. You know. Yeah, because I, I feel that each of us has a certain, you know, um, things we are good at. And, and there are people who are good at other things. And, and, and I found uh, a group of women who did this kind of applique and embroidery. And actually, they used to make, uh, and they still continue to do, you know, they make upholstery and, you know, they do bed covers and Kalaraksha. cushion covers. Not Kalaraksha. Mm -hmm. For Mukund and Riyaz, I'm saying, it's a group of women I came across. And uh, Nipa Ghushi introduced me to them. And uh, they said that, uh, no, 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 we can't do this figurative <laughs> kind of work. Um, ne kabhi kiya nahi hai. You know, we've never done it and all. So I said, just make one. Uh, it then Where were they? Ahmedabad. Just make one, you know. So they made, I think, uh, the ship or something. And uh, the first one. Hmm. Then I animated it. And I told them the story about my father. And then they saw it going away. They said, Acha, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, they got so much into it that um, when, when, whenever we would do a little bit, you know, we would show them bits and pieces. And uh, first, it was uh, Nina Ben ka kam hai, you know, Nina Ben ka kam hai. Then it became, ye Mukund kidar gya, wo Riyaz kidar hai, who, who has Riyaz with them? And finally, when uh, we showed the film and they were watching, uh, that when, when Mukund goes on the bicycle, the woman who made the bicycle, she, the, everyone turned to her, Tomorrow your peace is Your peace is going fast, you know, look. So they all claimed it, and that was beautiful. And even the Kutch people, you know, when um, the film was shown to them, uh, somebody said, what a nice story. And that man said, it's not story, it is our history. <laughs> so, so they kind of, uh, even with them, uh, they would uh, they would show all these works. First, they were not very, you know, uh, like, what will you do? Like, just why are you talking so much? Just take the pieces and, you know, you are an animator. You can just take these pieces. And already the story is obvious. For them, it's obvious, yeah. right? It's already there. I said, no, no, it is not obvious to me. <laughs> I need to know what exactly you were doing here and, and what you were thinking. And actually, because we were having these conversations, they also started re remembering things <coughs> they had not. So they would say, uh, I would say, you know, can you make a self-portrait, please? Because uh, I want to show you, you know, they had made Judy, they had made Prakash Bhai, but they had not made themselves. You know, she's like, ah, I'm not going to do it. So, and, and, and that's approach that we have, we, we can't force people to do things you know they don't want to do so i said see your voice will be there then you won't be there so what will i show 
so reluctantly they went home and you know they said okay come tomorrow we'll see and uh, so they made uh, uh, both of them you know showed showed their work and uh, rani ben uh, is you know the one who migrated from uh, uh, pakistan she made herself with a thick gold chain which she was wearing so I said, Arewa, you made your gold chain. She said, I bought this with the first piece I sold. So her whole thing, you know, how she wanted to be identified was that I, I made it, you know. And that was beautiful. And Maggie Ben uh, saw, gave me her work and then she took it back. Nah, give it to me. I said, what happened? She said, no, 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 I will, I, 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 I'll tell you tomorrow. And she took it away. And I thought, oh God, I offended her, or what happened? Did I say something? Then next day she brought it and gave it to me. And uh, I said, what happened? She said, you can't see the difference? I said, well, I couldn't see the difference. What did you do? She said, see, my bangle which says which community I belong to, I had forgotten to put it. Now it's there. And I noticed and I said, wow. So even one small thing, you know, like you ask somebody to make a self-portrait, it is uh, how people want to be seen or, you know, uh, it, it's very important that they, they, that you, you know, you don't interfere as a filmmaker, you sh like you let them come up with whatever they want. So that kind of collaboration, very uh, fascinating, you know, this collaboration between memory and fact. And, you know, yeah, and this, this collaboration between machine and hand because we are doing things by hand and we are animating everything on the computer. So, and then, you know, them creating something and saying, nah, 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 I, I don't take this. Why you took this? I said, why? Isn't it nice? No, it's incomplete. What is incomplete? And she would say, see, that milestone is not there. A good piece must have the milestone which shows this side is Pakistan, this side is India. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. <laughs> so you learn a lot. There was a white border around, and I thought it's just a border. And she said, no, no, that's the wall of Kalaraksha. That's the wall of our place. So these things we, we, we as the viewers, uh, not from that same context, we see it, we take, we assume many things, you know, and we think it must be this. But so unless you have that conversation, you wouldn't know, you know, what it was. Definitely. And I figure every piece here would have a story and a person who made it. So, and uh, I, I guess there are a few students that are also in here. So a brief explanation on the technical aspects of how you how go we about this? Uh, okay. animation should be okay. helpful. That's the simplest yeah. question. Okay. <laughs> so we just scan this into, first of all, I wish I had brought that artwork. Anyway, it, it is not like the sketch you make. You have to draw it in one single line on butter paper. Then these women go tick, 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 with, they make holes and then they spread on the cloth and then they, you know, mm, mm, put chalk through it so that they get the pattern. And then they do the stitching. After that, we scan it into Photoshop and we clean out all the white spaces around it. In the case of uh, these figures, like if you see the arms and hair, the different so that we can move them independently, there's no overlapping. And then uh, we animated that in After Effects. Very simple. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been working with cloth for very long. And uh, I would also want to know your take on different mediums for animation, be it cloth or uh, any other different medium. Yeah. I think any medium, no, is also speaking. <laughs> so, so cloth says a few things, you know, and cloth likes to behave in a particular way. It likes to move in a particular way. So, so whatever is this narrative, you know, whatever story one is trying to tell, it it works that way. Like one film I made with the Beel artist from Madhya Pradesh, and uh, their paintings are all made with dots. In, 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 while talking to them, I asked them why these dots, what do these dots mean, uh, you know, and uh, so they said that these, each dot represents an ancestor. 
then I sang, I said, my God, if it's an ancestor, we can't make them into a pattern, right? They have to move. <laughs> so we decided to move every dot and make them breathe because, uh, you know, it should pulsate with life, you know. So, of course, the animators on my team were annoyed like hell, you know, like, what do you think we are going to do all this? I said, yeah. I mean, there's no choice. We have to, like the bullock cart, no, all walking sideways. They were all like, how can we do this? I can't move the bullock like this. So I said, you move it, you know, turn the bull, make it move like you're used to, and then put it back. Because that's how they have represented it. We can't change it. If they're made dots, they're made dots. Then we have to work with the dots, you know. So I like uh, this kind of things that are found, like the stories are found. The art is found, the engagements are found, everything is found and I just, I'm just putting it together. That's about all I'm doing, yes. not unfolding. much. <laughs> You're unfolding other things. <laughs> Definitely. I'm trying to make sense of, you know, uh, how, to, how to communicate uh, what they are saying, what they are trying to say, what they haven't said but they're implying. And through the language which I have at my disposal, which has not only the image, but it has movement, it has um, sound, uh, it has music. So I have so many things, you know, by which I can, I can speak and the materials. Thank you. And uh, if there were any challenges that you faced while making these movies or as, a design, as an animator yourself, if there are few challenges while making these movies? Huh, there are challenges at every stage and at every level. There are technical challenges. We, we thought we were scanning something at high resolution, 1200 dpi, like let's do that. And when we projected it on the screen, everything was on Moya pattern. I said, oh my god, now how will I make my film? And then somebody said, no, 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 you just... <laughs> So that's how, and, and then memory is also like, you know, soft focus, right? So we are combining a cloth with watercolors just to see how that will work. It's a new thing I'm trying, I'm having fun with it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. So, um, Bhil or Kach both are like, um, narrative storytelling kind of a composition which folk art does so what was the idea behind doing it uh, as an animation or like where from this uh, came of making it more narrative mm -hmm. well um, one is that uh, you know um, their art is not something you can interpret that easily um, if I speak about the bills. So, uh, and if they are painting something, it, they're representing a certain part of the narrative. It's not the whole narrative. Mm -hmm. So, so why they paint? It's a very lovely story that, you know, they paint so that mm -hmm. there'll be rains, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, uh, their relationship with water, their relationship with animals, you know, with uh, nature, all of that, it is there in their art, but it is not in a narrative form because it's a single image or they make those pitora, you know, the pitoras you might have seen uh, because they're ritualistic things. So they, they are not trying to tell their narratives. And uh, now because they are selling their art in, you know, so many fairs and all, so they realize that people do like, uh, you know, images of everyday life, you know, so they make so they'll make a bus, they'll make a tractor or something like that. But they're all, you know, uh, fragments of their lives, which are not fully, you know. So what the film probably does or attempts to do, I would say, is um, make that narrative kind of uh, accessible, you know, through, through storytelling. So my question is, how do you decide how to move your components? Like, for example, you're covered. Uh, there'll be characters that go up, come down. And for example, in your Tanko Boleche, the bullet cards walk, the people walk. Uh, is it dependent on the story, or is it dependent on the art form that you use, or a combination of the two? 
see the movement is determined by you know uh, the kind of material there is a cloth moves in a particular way and and of course the way they have created say the bullock cart they created that way so we have to we have to be true to their representation i cannot take something i like and then do whatever else i like with it then i should make my own i, I can't be stealing somebody's work and then twisting it into shape to what works for me you know then i may as well uh, create it myself but if i'm going to take what they have created and i have to be honest to that form and see what i can do with it and then uh, what was the question again please oh, you had answered my question i wanted to know what how do you come to the position of how to move this composition how, or how to, to move, move. This composition? okay so with the the tanko village since you just saw it um, I was watching how the women would show their work to me, you know. So they would take the cloth, they would, uh, you know, they would pull it like this, or they would turn it like that. So I tried to bring that gesture also into the animation, because they are also very cinematic. And and the way she would talk, she would say, "Idhar ye ho raha hai, now here we are, now here." And all of cinema is. in the present mode you know we are constantly in the present mode you know we are going from one place to the other it's not like ye hua tha you know it's always even when you write the script eh, for a film it's always in the present moment you know so uh, that feeling i felt when sh- they were talking about their work to me and, and the gestures they were using you know to show the art so that kind of we try to mimic that gesture so you could feel um, as if that person was um, showing it to you you know to bring her into the thing and i feel um, why animation works better in, in uh, these kind of narratives is it gives them uh, a sense of uh, how shall we say uh, voice you know which uh, if if you take uh, a live action camera there are these uh, power things happening you know uh if if somebody sp- uh, trains a camera on to you you become a little conscious you know like you feel like i am under the <laughs> scanner so to speak and 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 people also get a uh, little hesitant uh, they don't want to tell everything because uh, or they are flustered you know i mean i remember one uh, st- uh, cover maker he would be perfect talking to me the moment i'd put on my camera he would start saying something else I said, "Abhi Mangilal ji, you were just talking about this. Ha, pata nahi mere ko kya ho jata hai, you know. Apki ye camera on hota hai, to mera dimag sard jata hai, you know. So, so obviously it it is something that to to get to, you know. Uh, here it is something that the language is theirs. They have created the image. So obviously it it, it is through that." this is their vocabulary through which they are speaking we don't only speak with words we also speak with the things we create and things like that so that way i feel animation is a very interesting way of even doing research you know so you get to know people because you are working together they forget after a while that tum mem sahab you know bombay se aaya hai you know and here we are in the village that kind of thing that kind of won't say disappears never disappears that wa- that like we said that table is always there you know between but somewhat we can speak more clear like i remember uh, my covered ga- maker uh, i said to him santu ji you change the color i wanted it this color te aapke wo computer mein karo aap to sab badal sakte hai you know you can change color so why don't you use your uh, why are you making me redo this i won't do it <laughs> but that that was fantastic because a uh, he could feel free to tell me off you know uh, and make me aware of what i can anyway do you know so uh, that when you uh, and, and you know when you're filming you know you, you, you i think people film uh, you have to, to do that kind of very naturalistic filming you have to Uh, stay a very long time and people have done it i won't say there are beautiful films in which uh, uh people have got people to speak about a lot of things you know in live action so it's not a fight between live action and animation as such but i just feel that uh, because they already have their records and you know, their visual records they have created them 
and we are only facilitating the telling and the delivery of whatever you know that they want to speak so that way animation for me works in that for me i use animation in that way you know i'm suchitra a class 10 student and i love drawing and i love watching animation and especially anime uh, and i would like to work in animation like anime uh, what would be your advice for me keep drawing <laughs> go to a college that teaches animation and then do what you want to do you know so develop your style if that is what you like you know it takes a little while to understand what it is that we want to do mm -hmm. uh, some people know it earlier in life which i think you are lucky you already know it uh, i took a very long time to realize this is what i want to do but yeah and you are you know you can teach yourself you can go online there are many things online also you can try out certain things uh, i'm sure there are workshops you know go to dot school they have <laughs> you can learn something they have probably you have workshops mm. yeah or to nift if they have a workshop happening Thank yes you. <laughs> because as a team, if there is a team, the work can be divided. But if you are doing a project by yourself, any animation project, so like starting from the research part, you talking to people, <coughs> recording it in your notes or sketches, what is the process like and how much time does it take? It depends, you know, like uh, uh, where the Kutch film was there, it was, it was sponsored, you know, it was funded by Tata Trusts and, you know, there was a kind of a deadline, like, you know, but we, I told them I'm doing my PhD, I can't be doing this all full time, I will not do I never make my film full time. I do many other things. I'm teaching, I'm writing, I'm doing all sorts of things. The film happens at whatever pace. But uh, like sometimes we have to meet a deadline. So the, typically at least one year <coughs> to make a eight to 12 minutes film. Because uh, the, the, the material is such, no, that uh, you can't, uh, you, can ma you can't mass <coughs> produce and you know, just start doing things. And I can't give it to like 10 people to do it. I work with just one or two animators. I, I can't work with a very big group. I'm terrible. I'll never make a feature in my life. I've decided. <laughs> you know, you have this much life. You have to be sure what you want to do and just do that and do it nicely. And there's so much to do in that itself. You know, one doesn't have to try and do everything that everybody else does. So that is one thing I know I never want to do is to never say never. But no, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> never, never make a feature. <laughs> and also at what point in your life did you decide to be an animator like you were doing sketching and then you went to NID and then still you were exploring because they have different subjects and like at what was uh, like at what point did you thought Ki, okay I will go in this field only so <coughs> I was in my second year uh, of animation masters not uh, <coughs> they didn't give us any degree by the way that time they were also exploring so <laughs> So we became the guinea pigs of, you know, the program. Afterwards, we were giving out degrees and, you know, making curriculums for people. But we never got a degree in animation, which is fine. So, um, <laughs> really, yeah. I have a certificate which from NID which says, uh, c certificate of animation workshop of two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> I have never had such a long workshop or conducted one in my life, but I have I have a evidence <laughs> of, of actually going through a workshop of animation. So, sorry, I, I digressed. What was it? At what point? What point did you oh, at what point? Oh man. I think, uh, so in my second year, I decided uh, I wanted to make an anti-dowry film. NID was into this, you know, you have to have a, you know, like, cause, 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 cause. Huh, cause. 
you have to change the world. Huh? You, you feel at that age, you feel you can change the world with one little film. Kya hai? But anyway, now I don't believe in any of those narratives. But that time it was, and uh, there, is, there was one, uh, you know, place across uh, Tiger Hall, which used to have, you know, these guys used to come from all over the country, craftspeople, and, you know, display their work. And, and I saw these Madhubani paintings, which was all on dowry. Dowry deaths and all. So I said, yeah, no, ye karne kai. you know, I'll do this. And I, I had this idea, I will go to Madhubani Bihar and I will sit with those ladies and I will teach them animation and we'll make a film and what not. My, <laughs> my professors looked at me like, you know, I lost it. Like, you will teach. Uh, how long will it take? Your, your thing is to be done in this much time. And, and you'll go to Bihar. You'll get butchered, you'll get raped, you'll have all of those things they said. So what can I do? But I want to make this film. Okay, so buy the paintings and animate it. So that's the first time that I did something with another's art and did something. But I got excited about animation then, that there was something one can, uh, you know, uh, do with it. I don't like very purposive kind of NID, we did a lot of purposive animation. We did on family planning, <laughs> adult education. Thank God I don't have to do any of that anymore. <laughs> I like stories, you know. I think stories move you a lot more than data and, you know, that kind of telling somebody what to do, which they already know. I mean, they just don't, can't do it, you know. Everybody has difficulties doing certain things. We don't have to do that indoctrination or whatever, that bullet theory, you know, of making people learn things they don't, they need to do it in their own time. So, so I, I like, I like stories. So I gave up on those things. Also, as an animator and an ethnographer, how do you capture people's story? Like, uh, how do you spend your whole day? Uh, <coughs> do you carry a sketchbook? Uh, or like if there are some, if you are traveling in a bus and there is some dialogue happening which you uh, hear not intentionally but because of them talking loudly. So do you like capture that in a sketch form or dialogues? Do you like write it down, whatever they are speaking? For, uh, if, if you want to use those things, local oh, dialogue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we pick up a lot of these things, you know. You're, uh, it's called being a committed eavesdropper. <laughs> You listen very carefully. I even give this as an assignment to my students. Go spend a day somewhere and just listen to other people talking. And don't show that you are hearing and don't start writing as soon as you hear the ch -ch -ch. You, you have to be invisible. You know, we, my, my friends don't like the fly on the wall uh, 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 metaphor. They like fly in the curry. You know, be inside, <laughs> like be immersed and, and hear whatever somebody's saying and then see what you can do with it. Yeah, yeah. We do that all the time. Because your stories are coming from, you know, what you're listening to. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, so you mentioned that your films usually take like one year because you're working on with material and stuff. So how do you like constantly stay motivated towards one particular goal for an entire year, let's say? Oh, I could go on. I did PhD for six years. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's, you know, if you're, if you're uh, in, invested in your story, na, you, 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 you can't give it up. In fact, I get withdrawal symptoms after it's done. I miss it. I miss it so badly. I love that. Huh? That you make a new one. No, you can't make a new one immediately because you're still in that old thing, you know, living it and saying, so much fun I had, so much fun I had. Of course, there are days you want to kill, murder your animator because he's not getting it right. But those are small things, you know. But I, actually, all the films that I have made so far, I have just had a lot of fun with my team also. We, we have so much fun, you know, talking about the film and you know like everybody gets very invested in the characters and things like that so motivation is not a problem for me but uh, yeah get funding is a very big problem <laughs> <laughs> to to have funds you know endlessly is not easy and like uh, do you like have like a dedicated team with you that help you with every animation or does it change or i have one dedicated animator and that's it 
and me and my sister now. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a particular emotion that you like portraying the most through your work? You are getting braver and braver. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's uh, I don't know. It's it's uh, making sense of you know what's happened. Uh, how does one um, carry on in life? You know, despite of whatever, whatever. Uh, and what I, I like I said earlier about tragedy, I'm not uh, I am not like Devdas types. I don't like uh, you know those kind of sorry uh, I'm so sorry kind of uh, you know stories. Uh, but I like pathos. I like uh, I like how people come out of it. Like even uh, the women in Kach, you know, in the end, she's saying like I love doing this. And I think what they enjoyed was that. You know, there is a sharing of, of that uh, trauma, but there is also, uh, you know, that one has uh, dealt with it and that one has moved on and that one is happy. And I think uh, that is there in all the stories. Even my mother's story ends, she's at peace, you know, with whatever happened. So I, I think maybe that's what it is, the, the Liat motif. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs>